In today's video, I want to cover a lesser known but important feature of tail scale known as an exit node, and discuss the differences between how an exit node differs from the default tail scale configuration. If you want to find out more about how to set up a tail scale exit node and when you should use it, then watch the rest of this video. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so, and if you find this video useful, remember to give it a like as it does help support the channel. So maybe you're wondering what exactly is an exit node, and why do I want to use one? To better understand, let's consider the different types of VPNs. On one hand, we have a third-party VPN such as NordVPN or PureVPN, which allow you to connect through a service and basically encrypts all your connections from your laptop all the way through their servers. In addition, it, it allows you to appear as if you're in a different geographical zone if you so desire. Then you have the self-managed VPN, such as OpenVPN or WireGuard, which allow you to connect to your own network and devices, as well as optionally act as a gateway to route traffic through the network when you're on the road. And then you have hybrid solutions like TailScale, which act as an overlay network that are only used when you want to access other TailScale devices and are bypassed when accessing normal internet traffic. To allow us to have a yet another option, Let's explore a feature in TailScale that allows you to extend the capabilities even further and act as a hybrid VPN solution. If you're already running TailScale, you know that with normal internet traffic, TailScale isn't really used at all. And the internet traffic is allowed to pass through whatever you're attached to, such as your Wi-Fi router, hotel router, or local coffee shop. But when you access another TailScale machine or a subnet router, all of your traffic is encrypted from the TailScale device to the TailScale device. In theory, you can accomplish the same thing with OpenVPN. However, TailScale is much faster, flexible, and more secure when accessing local devices. An exit node, on the other hand, works more like a traditional VPN, such as OpenVPN in that all of your traffic from, say, your laptop to your exit node, or the system that you define as your exit node, is totally encrypted. And like OpenVPN, your internet traffic uses your exit node machine as the gateway to the internet so that all your traffic comes through that machine and through your own firewall. Assuming most of you have Windows or Mac machines, let's go through a quick setup so you can see how easy it is to set up. Though it's not real obvious, the process of setting up the exit node is really simple to do. Assuming you have TailScale installed, right click on the TailScale icon and select Run Exit Node. If you don't have it installed, pause this video and check out my first video which covers the whole installation and setup. When you right click, you'll get a prompt warning you that connected device will be able to send their traffic through this device, which is sort of the whole purpose. If you're running this on a Windows machine, you'll also get an additional information that it's not yet optimized for Windows. Go ahead and click yes and you're pretty much done with the setup so that we'll now be able to toggle it on and off. Before we can actually use it though, there's a couple things that we need to do. You first have to go to the admin page and after you log in, you'll see that in the system that you just enabled, you'll have uh, the feature will be listed as being available. If you go to the triple dots on the right hand side and select edit route settings, and you can flip the slider onto the on position, which will activate that machine as your exit node or slash gateway. Though you can have it enabled on any tail scale machine, try to only flip one of them on at a time, unless you're running a really interesting configuration to avoid any conflicts. That's it for the front end of things. Now let's go see what to do with the clients and to choose whether or not you want to use it. When you want to route traffic through the exit node on a Windows machine, for example, right click on the tail scale icon and then select exit node and select the device that you want to run the traffic through. Only the devices that actually have this mode enabled will actually show up. On a Mac, use the upper menu bar and click the icon, the tail scale icon and select exit node. And again, pick the the um, device that you want to run your traffic through. You can now toggle this on and off anytime you need to encrypt all of your traffic or you just want to run it in a standard overlay configuration. So now that we know how, let's talk about why and when you might want to do this as well as the pros and cons of running all of your traffic through an exit node. As an example, 
I recently went to Paris, and there were sites I needed to get to that needed to come from the U.S. to avoid time zone, language, and identity concerns. In this case, using the exit node resolved all these issues and allowed me to appear as if I was in the States, as well as provide me access to all my devices and allow for complete encryption from my laptop to my home network. There are also times when you don't care about location so much and you just won't, don't trust what you're connected to. So you might want to encrypt traffic from point to point and allow everything to go through your firewall so you can use your own firewall rules and filtering. The downside of using an exit node is potentially performance. Though Tailscale is very quick at encrypting everything, running everything back to your home base may be an issue. For example, during my trip, I had to access a local site as the hotel traffic was being routed from Paris to my home and then back to Paris again, making things extremely slow. There are times when it may not make sense because you effectively have added one or more hops to your traffic and your performance may be impacted. This impact will vary significantly depending on where your exit node is versus where you are and the speed of both connections, as well as what you're connected to, such as a hotel or a coffee shop. Because the default approach of using Tailscale is an overlay network, in other words, only accessing your Tailscale devices um, or your subnet router, often the best approach for flexibility and performance. It's nice that we have an alternate method that can effectively use this as a private gateway, and we're able to encrypt all of our traffic if and when we need to. There may be even cases when you always want to route your traffic through an exit node, but this is a really a case-by-case -case basis depending on your own needs. Anyway, that's it for today's video, and I will post links to my other Tailscale videos for additional information. I hope you found this useful, and if you did, please give it a like. If you have any questions or comments about this, please leave them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.